Radio 59, WROW, first on the dial. And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Are you a commuter? When you hurry onto that late train in the evening, how do you choose your seat? You try to get as far as possible from the big black cigar, or as near as possible to somebody reading your favorite periodical. Next time, look out. You may be sitting next to the man who murders people. Now, before tonight's story of suspense, let's listen to some words of wisdom from a good friend of yours and mine, the host of CBS Radio's daily House Party. Hello, this is Art Linkletter with a few words about that crippling disease known as arthritis. What is arthritis? It's the most widespread chronic disease in the United States. Actually, more than 11 million people suffer with arthritis. Men, women, even children. 11 million. No wonder it's called our country's greatest crippler. What causes this cruel disease? Nobody knows. It's still a medical mystery. The Arthritis and Rheumatism Foundation is searching for the answers, and they need your help. Research is costly. So is treatment. This humane work can be carried out only with your support. So send a generous contribution today to your local chapter of the Arthritis and Rheumatism Foundation. Remember, it's care today and a cure tomorrow. Step up. Oh. oh, I thought I'd never... Watch it, miss. Your bundles. Look at oh. oh, oh, my package. Stay right on there. I'll get them. Oh. Here's your hat box Thank newspaper. You. Well, no wonder you girls oh. stumble wearing those spike heels. My purse. Where's my purse? Right here. Don't worry. Give it to me. Hey, watch it. You'll dump the stuff oh. again. And our two boxes. Uh, I guess oh. that's everything. So I didn't have enough to worry about. Everything has to go wrong now, at take once. Take it easy, miss. You caught the train. That's something... Oh, I wish I didn't have to take it. Well, too late now. Board over! I wish I didn't have to take it. This is horrible. What's the matter, miss? Oh, I I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize I was speaking out loud. Something you're reading in that paper bother you? Yes, it... Well, I wish I hadn't bought the paper. Not, uh... Not by any chance the Roseville murders you're reading about. Why, how did you know? <laughs> Everyone has those murders on his mind these days. I guess I'm awfully cowardly about it. Not at all. I know a lot of strong men who find themselves afraid of the dark since those bodies began to turn up around Roseville. It's not something to take lightly. You don't sound very scared. Me? No. As a matter of fact, I've always been rather interested in murder. Interested? Yes. Murderers are very clever people, you know. Geniuses, some of them. You can learn a lot studying these cases. Learn? I wish someone would learn who the killer is. What's the matter with the police anyway? Why don't they catch him? Why don't they... Because he's cleverer than they are, that's why. But they This had... man is the coolest, smartest killer that's ever been known in these parts, my girl. Here, let's look at what the paper says. Oh, no, no, please. I can't bear to see that picture again. Poor man he murdered last week. Now, I studied that picture for some time myself. Found it very interesting. You know, figuring out just what kind of a man he was, what kind of trick he might fall for, just how he'd react when he knew he was going to be murdered. Oh, please don't. Well, you're trembling. <laughs> well, I believe you're really frightened. Well, don't, don't, don't you see? I live in Roseville. Oh. Live in Roseville, huh? How do you think it feels to get off at that lonely station at night? Not knowing in what shadow this... This creature may be standing watching me? So you live in Roseville. 
You say, I'm not far from there myself. You ever pass Arthur Jenkins' antique shop on Bowley Road? That's my place. I remember seeing it. My aunt's very interested in antiques. You must bring her in sometime. I'll show her my personal collection. That's very kind of you. Glad to do it. Old weapons are my specialty. I got some pretty rare stuff. But, uh, getting back to this murder oh, business... Oh, must we, Mr. Jenkins? Tickets, tickets, have them ready, please. Oh, where did I put that darn thing? Tickets, please. Here you are, Conductor. Thank you. Everything okay now, miss? Oh, yes, thanks. I, I was just awfully nervous about missing the train. My aunt worries so if I'm not on the early one. I know how it is. Well, you'll get your supper hot tonight. Here's my ticket. Thank you. Tickets. Have your tickets ready. Ah, let's see now. Where were we? Oh, yes, the paper. Oh. Here now. First victim two months ago. Young mechanic from the Parkway filling station. Found in the reservoir. Stabbed in the heart. Apparently thrown out of a car. No clues whatever. And he was such a nice young fellow. We often talked while he was servicing my car. Then when I... When I saw this in the papers... Second murder. Wealthy broker left New York on the 445 one evening and never arrived home. And then... Just like the poor mechanic. Body turned up three days later at the foot of the Mill Road embankment. Again, a knife wound in the heart, but no knife, no weapon, no clue. Just a body. That's the one that horrified me so. Suppose I should have a, a flat tire in my car tonight when I get to the station. I'd have to phone the garage and then sit and wait in the dark shed all alone. I can see how you feel. Or, or even if I try to drive to the garage, I'd have to go slowly. And it's right through the woods and... And, and the man who murders people jumps out of the woods in front of your car? Yes, definitely something to be nervous about. I hate to leave the house to go to work in the morning. And poor Aunt Maud. She worries all day till I get home. Doesn't a pretty girl like you have a boyfriend to look out for? Well, I haven't been living in Roseville very long. You know, I've been thinking. I get off the station after Roseville, but if you like, I could get out and see you to your car and then take the bus on up. Oh, I... I couldn't let you do that. It's not much out of my way at all. As a matter of fact, I often drive down that way in the evenings. It's a beautiful drive. Up the mill road, past the reservoir. But well, you're looking at me so strangely. I think I will go with you and see to your car. No. No, I, I don't want you to. Well, we can talk about it later. But uh, get back to the murderer again. You know... I wouldn't mind being called crazy if I could baffle the police as cleverly as this fellow does. Mr. You Jenkins... You last week now. That was the third case. Will you stop? What? What's the matter? Stop talking about the Roseville murder. Oh, no. I don't want to hear any more, I tell you. I don't want to talk about bodies being found and, and fiends with long knives hiding in the woods. Come, um, come now. You mustn't let yourself get so excited. Now, this man who strikes so cruelly, don't you wonder what started him murdering? Do you suppose... Power was what he wanted. Power over... Pardon me. May I uh, sit down? Huh? Uh, what? Is this seat taken? No. No, I, I turned it forward so I could put my bundles there, but I can move them. Here, I'll, uh, I'll just pile them on top of each other. There. Plenty of room. Well, uh, I think I'll go back and have a smoke. Goodbye, Mr. Jenkins. I'll talk to you again later. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return for the second act of Suspense. Do you start out for a drive in a car with the fateful anxiety of a soldier going into battle? Cars have been created for our pleasure and convenience. However, carelessness has made them responsible for more human death than any planned carnage in the history of man. It's hard to know why people who have no desire to destroy themselves should be guilty of this kind of irresponsibility. Despite the many automatic features in today's automobiles, nothing has yet been invented to take the place of human intelligence in control. Whenever you take your car out, 
Whether for an errand in the neighborhood or a long trip on the highway, remember, it takes only one split second of inattention on your part to make all the safety features of your car meaningless, to turn the whole comfortable, luxurious machine into a weapon as personally destructive as any H-bomb. Drive with constant caution, common sense, and courtesy. Keep your car from destroying you. Uh, Miss, uh, are you crying? No. No, it's nothing. Gosh, is there there anything I can do? I mean, I'm I'm sorry. I'm the one who should apologize. It's silly of me, but I've been so nervous and... Then that man... That man? You mean that heavy-set guy who just left? Yes, that, that's the one. Well, has, has he been annoying you? I, I... Oh, no, no, no. It's not that, really. It's just that... Well, I live in Roseville. Oh. I... Oh, yeah. I, I guess you've heard of the murders that have been going on in that area. I'll say. Some guy's been knifing people at night and leaving the bodies around. Yes. And the killer is still at large, and... Of course, everyone in the neighborhood is terribly frightened. Police can't seem to get any clue at all on the case. No. And the papers are so full of it that it's hard to put the ghastly thing out of your mind. But about this guy who was sitting here... Well, that's what I'm getting at. I I was terribly nervous to start with, and this man sat down beside me just as we were leaving New York, and first thing you know, he he started to talk to me about those murders. He's got a charming approach. I didn't want to talk at all. Especially about that, but... He he couldn't stay off the subject. Sound? And he kept saying what a genius the murderer is, and and talking about the men who were killed, and and how they felt when they... when they knew they were going to be murdered. Oh, now, please, don't cry again. What's the matter with that guy talking to a girl like that? And, And then he said... He'd get out at Roseville with me and and take me to my car. And I was scared and didn't want him to, and he insisted. Insisted, did he? Wait till that guy comes back. I'll tell him a thing or two. What are you out there? What's going on here? You, I'll tell you what's going on. Oh, oh, now, now, please. Look, you've annoyed this lady till she's almost hysterical, that's what. Why, what are you talking about? Who do you think you are, forcing your conversation on a girl who's frightened and nervous and wants to be left alone? Who says I force myself on the girl? You must be crazy. There's something wrong with one of us, but it's not me. Now, get out of this car, do you hear me? Oh, I, I what do you mean, mean ordering me around the train? I mean business, brother. Right, this is and outrageous. The next time I I've... see you hanging around this lady, I'll knock your block off. So get going before I really get mad. I never heard of such a thing. The young hood will try to tell a respectable man. Yeah. I don't think he'll be any more bother. I, I was sure he was going to hit you. You're having a little trouble up here? No, it's, it's all right, conductor. Fellow was a bit annoying to the lady, but nothing serious. We, uh... We straighten it out. Well, I don't know if it's the murders or what, but this Roseville run sure is hard on the nerves lately. Guess all your passengers are a little jittery up here. Yeah, a guy annoys girl, lady smacks another lady's kid, man breaks a window because it won't open. <laughs> well, that's that. All quiet? Uh-huh. Gosh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to let you in for that scene, but I, I thought it was best to show him I meant business. I guess you're right. But, oh... I'm glad it's over. What a train ride. All included on your commutation. No extra charge for the fireworks. I'm just exhausted. You'd think I'd been doing the work. Well, you've uh, you've been under a strain. How about sitting back and relaxing? Let me fix that back for you. Oh, thank there. you. There now. Just take it easy from here in. It's been pretty nerve-wracking for you. I, I don't know what I would have done if... If you hadn't come along, Mr... Mr... Uh, Mackenzie. Bill Mackenzie. Mr. Mackenzie. You know, I, uh... I believe I've seen you on this train before. I'm certainly glad you saw me this time. I'm glad, too. For more than one reason. Well, now that it's over, I... I guess I was a bit silly about the whole thing. That man didn't really have such a bad face at all. (laughs) He's no monster, just tactless, that's all. That's right. But me with my frayed nerves waving in the breeze, 
I suspect a rabbit of being the Roseville murderer if I met one on the mill road in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's true the guy's probably harmless, but there's no reason why I should go on annoying you, even unintentionally. Well, I do thank you for stopping him. By the way, my name is King Murray, Mr. McKenzie. I live just outside of Roseville, the other side of the reservoir. Glad to know you, Miss Murray. I live in Newbury myself, but... Look, if you're still frightened, oh, I... Oh, thank you. But I don't feel a bit frightened now. My car is quite near the tracks, and it's only a ten-minute drive home. I'm sure you'll be all right. Because I could see you home, and then I could grab a bus back to Newbury if you'd like me to. Oh, it won't be necessary, really, Mr. McKenzie. Call me Bill, won't you? Since we're kind of neighbors, we ought to get better acquainted. All right. Bill. Kay. Yes? I told you I've seen you on the train before. Yes? Well, to tell the truth, I've, uh, I've noticed you particularly. <laughs> That's flattering. And, uh, since luck has brought me your acquaintance, may... May I take the advantage of it and suggest I'd like to see you again sometime? Well, I... I... Well, how about dinner or a show some night? Or whatever you'd like to do. I'd like to, but... Well, it's, it's kind of sudden, Kay, but... Please say yes. Well, you might come up to the house some evening and meet my aunt. You mean when I have a stamp of approval, we can go on from there? <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> uh, it suits me fine. Let's see, um... This is Wednesday. How about tomorrow night? Mm, afraid I can't make it tomorrow. Oh, Friday, then. Friday will be all right. Uh, about 8 o'clock. Nobody. Nobody. Uh, I've got to get off here. Now, are you sure you don't want me to ride up with you? Oh, no, thanks, Bill. I'm not scared anymore. Uh, how about your address, Kay? Oh, uh, I'm on Ferncliff Road, number 42. It's a big white house just off the mill road. I'll find it, all right. See you Friday, Kay. Bye. In a moment, we will return for the third act of Suspense. Hi. Maybe you'll recall this tuneful reminder of times past. This is Dennis James with something else worth remembering. It's this. You're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. See, it's the normal, natural way to youthful regularity. The whole brand content of Kellogg's All Brand supplies your system with all the bulk-forming food that you need every day. There's only one All Brand. It's Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve irregularity from lack of bulk, as millions do, with a bowl full of Kellogg's All Brand each morning. A double L hyphen B R A N. It's Kellogg's All Brand. Oh, darn these doors. They never do open. Here, yeah, miss, let me do it. Oh. Scared me, Conductor. Yes, will you please? I have so much to carry. Yeah, so just let me get in there. Oh, oh look out, my bundle. Oops. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, say, I'm sorry. That was clumsy of me. Here, yeah, let me pick him up again. Oh, huh? dear. Oh, look out. Don't step on that bag. Uh, I got him rolling all over. Here, yeah, wait till I catch that hat box. Ah, here's the two packages. Hat box, and, uh, pocketbook, and your uh, newspaper. Thank you, Conductor. Here. I'm through with the paper. I'll let you enjoy the Roseville murders. Oh, thanks, miss. Wait a minute. There you are. You got everything? Yes, thank you. May I sit down? Oh, I certainly do. What? Why, what do you want? I want to apologize to you, Mr. Jenkins. I've been feeling dreadful about that young man being so hasty with you. Young Sir Galahad, huh? 
If I annoy you, why don't you keep away from me? That's just it. You don't annoy me. Well, if I don't, you certainly let Honestly, that... Honestly, Mr. Jenkins, it's hard to explain just how it happened, but... Well, I was so tired and nervous and all, and... The young man got the impression that you'd been upsetting me. A bit impetuous of him, wasn't it? I guess it was. Actually, I... I know you didn't mean to upset me, and I was terribly embarrassed when he spoke to you that way. Well, pretty embarrassing all around, I'd say. Well, I didn't know what to do. He meant well, you see, and it all happened so fast. Anyway, I thought I'd walk back and find you to tell you how sorry I am over the whole mix-up. Well, I don't know. I... I'm not accustomed to being taken for a masher. But you weren't at all. I wouldn't have been speaking to you in the first place if you hadn't looked like a respectable person. Well, I certainly wasn't being treated like that. And I would have enjoyed talking if I hadn't been so unstrung. But you know what nerves can do to a person. Well, I knew you were jumpy about something the first time I looked at you. My name is Kay Murray, Mr. Jenkins. Can't we shake hands and... No hard feelings? Well, uh... <laughs> all right, young lady. I guess it was all just a misunderstanding. I didn't intend to be rude, and... Well, it's nice of you to understand. Roseville! Roseville! Say, here's your station now. Yes, and we're right on time. Oh, let's see. Have I got everything? You, uh... You have quite an armful. (laughs) You know, Miss Murray, I'll repeat that offer I made before, if you like. I mean about seeing you to your car, uh, if you want me to. Oh, no, it it really isn't necessary. Pretty dark night, young lady. Well, gee, I I don't know. Now that it comes right down to it, I, I guess I would feel better if you'd walk over with me. Then I can drop you off at the bus station. If you're sure, it won't make you too late. No, no, I never run on a schedule. I'm often busy half the night. <laughs> well, we'd better hurry. Is the car far? No, no, just the other side of the grove. Watch your step. Uh, 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 jump. Uh, 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 which way? Oh, uh, right over here. There's a path. All right. See that you don't stumble. You certainly don't waste much electricity in these stations. Now, this is the bad part. In through the trees here. Why, I'm glad you came. (laughs) Uh, It's dark, all right. And quiet with the train gone. Hmm. Did you hear something? What do you mean? There it is again. Let's stop a minute. Hear it? There's someone following us. I don't hear a thing. It must have been the trees. Wait. I could have sworn... (sighs) Well, maybe not. Let's go. Oh, gee, you really had me worried for a moment. Strange what tricks mental suggestion can play. Very strange. Why, there probably isn't a living soul within half a mile of here. Not at this time of night. Now, if I'd been alone and thought I'd... There he is, look, between the trees. Stand still, both of you. He's got a gun case, stand still. No, no, it can't be. Let him move, you hear not too dark for me to shoot straight. You! Oh, who is it? It's the, the conductor on the Roseville train case. Oh. Uh, if you'll just step back on the path and put your hands over your head. No! No, you Don't never... run, Kay! He'll shoot! You'll never get... <laughs> you... You've killed her. I doubt it. I aimed too low. Here, let's see. That's what I thought. Bullet didn't even touch her. It's those heels she tripped and hit her head. She almost got away from you. Well, what are you waiting for? Where's the knife? You'll see it soon enough. 
First, come over and give me a hand with this girl. I won't help you. I won't move. Hey, do I have to get uh, disagreeable? Why don't you kill me and get it over with? Just a minute. Who do you think I am? I know who you are. So one day everyone will know, do you hear? You can't get away with it. Hold it, mister. I happen to be riding that train as special investigator. What? This gal dropped her purse boarding in Grand Central and was so edgy about it, I began to wonder what was inside. I managed to spill her bundles later and get a quick look in the purse while retrieving them. Then I remembered the madman's third victim was last seen walking with a pretty girl. Well, why do you think I followed the two of you? I... I don't know. I... Oh, what... What was in the purse? You ever see one of these? A... A pruning knife. You never know what's turned a normal mind into a crazy whirlpool of hate. Uh, Me? I would have been the fourth victim. My my purse. Where is it? You're trading it for a pair of bracelets, sister. I never thought the man I was after would be wearing spike heels. Suspense. You've been listening to The Man Who Murders People. Written for Suspense by Mariana Norris. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of Suspense. Ever stop to think about this? Radio is the swiftest, most flexible news medium. In addition, as veteran CBS newsman Lowell Thomas observes... I wonder if you are taking full advantage of something that radio can do best of all. That is... Keep you informed on national and world events. The Daily Human Show. That's what I'm here for. And I hope that you will join me each evening for a fast swing around the world. Lowell Thomas. Each Monday through Friday night at this radio address. Now, here's news about CBS News. Soon, broadcasting's foremost news service brings you twice the coverage. Double the detail... Double the depth. Starting Monday, November 28th, each weekday, CBS News goes double for you for a full ten minutes every hour on the hour. The first word in speed. The last word in accuracy. CBS News goes double for you soon on CBS Radio. Tonight's story were Vivian Smolum as Kay, George Petrie as Jenkins, Alan Manson as Bill, and Maurice Tarplin as the conductor. Listen again next week when we return with Night on Red Mountain by William N. Robeson. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense.